my slapdashers. Welcome to the Slapdash Kitchen. I am Aaron, the Slapdash Cook. We all know not everyone is born learning how to cook, so it's incumbent upon us to gain that skill and really enhance our lives. A lot of people, such as myself and maybe other men, have struggled in the kitchen, but I think I have a grasp on everything, so I'd like to share that knowledge with you. Really the goal here is to look at simple American dishes and look at ways that we can take them up a notch. So let's get into it. Hold on to your aprons. Today we're making slapdash peachy pork picante. This recipe is coming to you from the Gaines United Methodist Church cookbook in Gaines, Michigan, which I have right here in all of its glory. Gaines is where my husband grew up, and this is where he went to church when he was just a lad. And for everyone who has to know, and they're really curious, Gaines is in Genesee County in Michigan, south of Flint. Now, I know what you're thinking. A lot of these church lady cookbooks are full of jello salad and sloppy joe recipes. But if you really look closely and read in between the lines, there's a lot of good recipes in here, and there's a lot of wisdom. And if you're starting to learn how to cook, this is a great place to start. It also really provides an opportunity to get all slapdashy and make these recipes your own. For this recipe you'll need one pound pork tenderloin cut into chunks. Go ahead and get any kind of prepackaged pork tenderloin. If it's already seasoned with something you don't think will mix well you can always rinse the seasoning off. Mine came with an applewood bacon flavor which I think will work quite nicely for this. You'll also need taco seasoning. Of course, you can buy one of those packets of taco seasonings, but I found those contain a lot of unnecessary salt and additives. So if you have chili powder, paprika, garlic powder, cumin, salt, pepper, and any other spice you think would work, you can make your own taco seasoning, which I did here. You'll also need vegetable oil, one eight ounce bottle of chunky salsa, any other kind of salsa will do really, one cup of chopped bell peppers, Whatever color you like, today I have red and yellow, but you can really just pick whatever ones you think are going to be the most pleasing. The recipe says one cup. I have well over one cup, but that is just fine. One third cup of peach preserves and one cup of rice. And now it's time for Slapdash Secrets. Secrets. Get out those peach emojis. A great way to kick up this recipe is using real peaches along with the peach preserves. You can get these canned or use fresh peaches. If you are using canned, I would just make sure they are cut into strips or smaller pieces. I'd also avoid putting any of the syrup solution in there. And if you happen to have any pineapple chunks in your fridge or cupboard, you can throw them right in here too. It's gonna to add more to the fruit flavor. It's also gonna add another color and texture. All right, my slapdashers, it's time to finally cook. You'll start by taking these pork chunks coating them in the seasoning that we created or the taco seasoning packet that you have and then putting them in here to fry. Obviously that's what you needed the vegetable oil for to put in the pan and you can always add more to make sure that it doesn't stick. A light coating of the meat chunks is good. We are starting to get sizzling. As far as the temperature you should be cooking this at, it should be over medium to high heat. You don't want it so hot that the oil is spitting back in your face, but enough to let it cook. And you're going to want to let these cook until they're nice and brown. Very happy to be using all these spices because you know what the Slapdash cook says, there's never such thing as too much spice. And also if you need to, you can always put more spice in here to coat the meat chunks. I think I'm going to have just about enough, so that's great. Once all the meat is covered in the spices and it's in the pan, it's good just to kind of move around just to make sure everything gets an even cook. You can always add more oil if you'd like to make sure it's not sticking, but it looks like we're in good shape. It really smells amazing. All right, take a look at that. You're gonna want all the meat chunks to have some color on them from the pan, properly browned. You just wanna look at all the pieces, make sure you don't see anything that looks raw on the outside. Of course, it's going to be fully cooked once we get everything in here and make the dish, but I think that's looking good. Now it's time to throw everything else in. Bring down the heat a little bit. 
All right, peppers. Salsa. Peach preserves. And it wouldn't be a slapdash dish without throwing in some random fruit, so pineapple and peaches. You can also add more spices at this point if you're feeling adventurous. I'm just going to put in whatever I had left from when we were coating the meat chunks, and I think that will be good. We have lots of flavors in here already. So I'm just going to mix that up just to make sure it's ready for a nice long simmer. Once again, it's good to see all the different colors and lovely to see the pineapple and peaches together with the peppers. I'm going to bring it up to a boil. Once I'm at the boiling point, I'm going to turn it down and then it's going to go on for a simmer of about 15 to 20 minutes. We're at the boiling point, so I'm going to turn down the heat to a simmer and cover. I would say this can cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's done when it's done, people. But I would not walk away and go watch Seinfeld or water the plants or anything. You're going to want to come back every now and then just to make sure it's not burning. Uh, maybe stir things around and make sure it's all good. And while this is simmering away, it's a great time to get started on your rice that we're going to have with this dish. Set this onto a boil. When it comes to rice, I always follow the rule of if you have a cup of rice, then you double that in the amount of water. So one cup of rice equals two cups of water in the pan. And when it comes to rice, it's important not to get overzealous. This might not look like much right now, but it's really going to expand when it's cooked. They say a wash pot never boils. It's happening. With the water finally boiling, I'm going to add the rice. Stir it around a little bit. If you want to prevent some sticking of the rice, you can always put some oil or butter in there. That's going to keep everything well lubed. So I am just going to reduce it to about half the heat and let it cover and simmer until it is nice and tender and all the moisture is cooked off. It's now been about 25 minutes since I started the cooking, so let's take a look at our rice. I would say it has come together very well. All that moisture is gone. And I'm going to turn off the heat here. Let it simmer on the stove top just to burn off any excess moisture. Now, as far as the moisture fight goes, let's take a look at our peachy pork picante. As you'll see, we still have a lot of liquid in here. But of course, that was our fault. We put a lot of fruit and vegetables in here, so of course a lot of liquid is going to be released. So, it's been about 25 minutes. I guess I lied. It did not take 15 to 20 minutes, but that's mostly because of the additives that we put in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it simmer in the open air to burn off the excess moisture for another five minutes and see how we're doing. It's now been a little over a half hour since I started this, and I am about to declare this peachy pork picante complete. If you want to take a look here, you'll see a lot of the moisture has cooked off. You don't want to cook off all the moisture because you're going to want some of it left for the sauce that is formed with all the juices and the spices and the preserves that we put in. So spectacular. I am going to turn off the heat and serve on a bed of rice. Oh, is this a king or a queen size bed of rice? Terrible dad joke. And just plop right on that bed of rice. Add some green beans and this will be the finest of suppers. And there you have it, peachy pork picante from the Gaines United Methodist Cookbook. 
And a special thank you to Ruth McLeod, who supplied us with this heavenly dish. I found that church cookbooks are a great place to find recipes. They're full of tried and true recipes that I guess had to be good enough to be entered into a book and tried out by their peers. So if you're just learning to cook, this is a great place to start. There's a lot of tried and true recipes in here with a lot of church lady wisdom. It's just going to be up to you to add your own spin on these recipes and get all slapdashy. Congratulations, you've completed the Peachy Pork Picante Slapdash course. It's time for a cocktail. You've earned it. Cheers. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I'm also on social media on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching and keep it slapdashy.